Hello and welcome back to 5 Minute Geography with me Stephen Doyle. Each week I'll be uploading a 5 minute video explaining as simply as possible the world around us. Please hit the like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on future content. If you'd like me to cover a specific topic please put it in the comment section below. In this video we're going to be focusing on plate tectonics but we're going to focus mainly on the structure of the earth. The earth is about 4.6 billion years old and it was formed from large clouds of dust and gases. As the earth cooled, the heavier stuff, all that heavy material such as iron and nickel all sank to the centre, whereas the lighter stuff, the rocky kind of material, that all floated upwards. Due to this, the earth then, it shrank and it solidified to form the planet that we have today. We see that the earth is made up of a crust, a mantle, an outer core and an inner core. If we think of the earth as a football, if the earth was the size of a football, the crust would only be about 0.5 mil thick. The earth has two different types of crusts. There's a thin crust underneath the ocean and then there's a thicker crust under the continents. They differ in age, they're different thicknesses and they have different material that makes them up. So when we think of the crust, we have to think of continental crust and oceanic crust. We start with the oceanic crust. The oceanic crust is between 6 and 10 kilometers thick. On top of it is a thin blanket of sedimentary rock. It consists of sand, clays and shell. Beneath this blanket, the ocean's crust contains ancient, heavy, igneous rock, mainly made up of basalt. The rocks of the ocean crust are often referred to as SEMA. This is because the most abundant material in it is silica and magnesium. Silica plus magnesium gives you SEMA. The continental crust, on the other hand, varies in thickness, somewhere between 30 kilometers and 60 kilometers in thickness. It mainly consists of younger, lighter material, such as granite. It's composed mainly of silica and aluminum and this is referred to as seal. The continental crust does not begin at the coastline, but in ocean water far beyond the shore. This submerged area of continental crust is known as the continental shelf. The lithosphere is the solid outer part of the earth. So it's composed of the crust and the upper section of the mantle. A solid, relatively kind of a rigid shell around 100 kilometers thick. And the rocks here can bend, but they don't really flow. They're rigid. On the other hand, this thing called the asthenosphere, this part is found directly below the lithosphere. The rocks here are hotter and they're partially melted. So this gives them a kind of a texture like a putty. And as a result of this texture, they're able to flow. So rocks can flow in this state, in the asthenosphere, the lithosphere floats on the asthenosphere. The inner core is a solid ball of iron. It's about 6,000 degrees Celsius. Why is it solid if it's that hot? Well, it's solid because of the surrounding pressure. It's made up of kind of two sections, a liquid and an outer core and a solid inner core, both consisting of nickel and iron, and each core is also extremely hot. The mantle makes up 75% of the Earth's volume and consists of several layers of rock. It can be rigid just underneath the crust and it can also be liquid as it gets closer to the cores. The mantle as we've just seen can be broken into layers and the layer just directly underneath the lithosphere is known as the asthenosphere. That wraps up this video. I hope you now have a clearer understanding of the structure of the Earth and the layers that the earth is broken into.